Welcome back. Long time coming. It's been a while. Miss y'all. My boys uh, had a little brush with COVID. Summertime's on us. Right on us. Spring is here. Some MMA action, you know. Got um last ca- last UFC card was a freebie, and we got to see the return of Polish power. Jan Blachowicz getting the ring versus Alexander Rakic, and uh, what was promised to be a title eliminator ended up a victory for Blachowicz, but a uh, huge blow for the 205 division. And Alexander Rakic, by I mean, blew his knee out, so he's probably going to be out for at least a year. Thoughts? Sucks that it had to go down like that. Yeah, it. it that's a that's a hard blow to that division, which I already think is becoming more and more less interesting. The young dogs just aren't making it the way that they they're supposed to right now. So it's an older division, and losing him as a contender was a deep blow, especially in that way. Well, yeah, what do you think? Division is uh, I wouldn't say lackluster, but. It's got a lot, what what they say on the broadcast is the retirement home or something, or where all the old guys go. What, what they said, they yes. said something like that, right? They, in so many words, they basically said it's the oldest division, which should be heavyweight, but light heavyweight's got it, it's the old guys competing. So, well, I think at the bottom half is is like all the the up and comer dudes are coming, the young guys. Yeah, and I expected, that's what I was kind of trying to allude to, was, you know, they expected a lot of these guys to pop off. You know, like, Johnny Walker was supposed to be the future, and then, you know, Jimmy Crute was supposed to be the future, and Krylov was supposed to be the future. Jamal Hill's starting to come up. But, or even Dominic Reyes was the future and then fell off hard. So, it's... The old guy division, they're all holding strong. The veterans are doing their thing. What he lost? And the three new guys just Reyes. Who? Reyes? Three in a row, right? I'm not, it might be two. Uh Jones, Jan, Yuri. Yeah, three in a row. Okay, so I'll three in a row, but the worst game. thing about him is the way he lost all those. The last Jones two. obviously they thought he w- he could have won that fight, but then his last two were bad knockouts in the second round, and he just hasn't seen the same. Well, we could get a rematch of uh, the two old guys fighting for the title if Glover gets past Yuri. Definitely an option, especially since uh, Glover's talking about his ideal future is to beat Yuri and then have a retirement fight in November. That would be good for for Glover to defend the title a couple times and call it quits. Right. Especially if he can. If he can get past Yuri... I mean, there's not much more you need to prove in that division period, especially at his age. He could go out on top. As talented as Yuri is, because he's extremely talented, he got he has some skills, especially mm-hmm. in the stand-up. Um, very explosive, dangerous everywhere, dangerous at range, dangerous in tight. Um. He presents a lot of challenges for pretty much the entire division when it comes to just pure stand-up. However, one thing that can you know slow down a lot of these more flashier styles is is wrestling, and you know it's hard to do all those unpredictable long-range attacks when you're on your back and scrambling to get up or getting ground and pounded. Or defending submissions. And that's one thing that our champion, Glover Teixeira, has at his disposal. Is he's probably 
the best wrestler currently at two hundred at a hundred and um no actually at two hundred and five pounds. So Yuri, I would assume, would be a favorite in this fight. There are but no wrestlers, Goldberg, huh? In two or five. There's right not now. many. There's, there's not many. Just reviewing the the rankings over there too, and I was like, who is there? I mean, there's not many pure wrestlers. There's some good grapplers, but there's not many. No, the, not many pure wrestlers. Two hundred five anymore. Exactly. There, there really is no wrestlers at all. Actually, not in the top fifteen. There, like you said, there's some grapplers like Paul Craig. I wouldn't really call him a wrestler, but he's definitely a grappler. And you got Jimmy Crude, who's also a grappler, but not necessarily yeah. a wrestler. Even though he does yeah, have I wouldn't wrestling. really call him a wrestler either. Right. And he has wrestling, but he's not it's not like um his strongest asset that's utilized every single time he gets in the cage. Whereas Glover, even though he's he's got decent boxing, if he can impose his real will with the wrestling game, he will. And he mm-hmm. often does. That's why, that's why I think Yuri. That's why I think he has the biggest edge versus Prohashka. We haven't seen Yuri on his back, or fighting off take, or fighting off of his back. We haven't seen it yet, so we don't know if he has the ability to one be able to defend those takedowns rep- repeatedly and get up, or um, if he can contend with someone who has to who has that in the game plan. Every fight he's had so far has been pretty much stand up battles. Yeah, I mean, he's. We're literally talking about a two fight spread. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I was like, he don't got that many fights, yeah. and then I just pulled it up. It's two fights. But he two beat, fights, and they were both strikers. Yep. They beat contenders mm-hmm. with the greatest of ease. Yeah. And flashy, too. No one can forget that uh, elbow to Reyes. That uh, he blocked the punch with a headbutt. Yes, from Ozdemir. But that's the thing: is that recklessness going to be his downfall? He knows it too. He said it uh, in some something. He said he knows that he, he's got to change that style up. This is not good for longevity. It's one thing to say it; it's another thing to do it. Um. If you you typically don't see fighters change what's working while they're while it's working. Yeah, it usually takes a slice of humble pie before you can get any real switch ups. And what would he look like in that situation too? Because I mean, we have that's something I said over and over again about Johnny Walker. He needs to take a more calculated approach. But Johnny Walker looks worse than ever, trying to be less flashy. Johnny Walker looks terrible because he's with fucking Kavanaugh. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I, I give enough Irish hate. Man, fuck that. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Look, man, he, he, Johnny Walker is physically gifted as shit. Like, he has all the tools. Um, I think he need, if he, for him to be successful, it's by successful, I mean winning the title, he has to go to a real camp. Where they have like actual game plans and they're not like a yes man type fucking crew with they have at Kavanaugh's gym. It's just Connor and then the rest of those flunkies. So do you think that Kavanaugh's gym is almost like um <clears throat> Oh god, I don't even remember his name, he's so irrelevant now. Ronda Rousey's old coach. Do you think Kavanaugh's just like that? The only reason why their names out there and then they have a camp that people started going to is because of one star yeah because you can make a well, thing is it's like it's about money too right so you mm-hmm. have a cash cow with rousey and you were talking about edmund right yeah right so you had a cash cow with ronda rousey who was wrecking shop at um in the women's was that bantamweight division no was that women's yes. bantamweight she was wrecking shop at a thin women's bantamweight division became a champion Fell in love with her hands. Found out quickly that she wasn't no good with her hands. Then that camp fell the fuck off. 
Same with Connor. He was wrecking. Uh, he was a big dude wrecking the shit out of the hundred and thirty-five pound division in the males. Um, no, no, the Waltz is that not Waltz? Wait, sorry, that's uh, uh, is a light. Oh, 45 featherweight. featherweight. He wrecked the featherweight division. Connor did. Mm-hmm. Came a star. And he's been basically average at best in everything above 145 pounds. Been pretty average. I'll agree with that. Been pretty average in that. But that camp and the notoriety that he brought to that camp gained extra like attention. Like you got guys, like I said, you have plenty of people that went over there just to get a piece of that that rock like because they didn't know all right well I'm, I'm in connor's gym so whatever aura connor has you're in that glow so if you get you know if you if connor's on the card most likely you're going to be on that card and we have this camp but i haven't seen anything that, to prove that i have an awesome great coach that's a great camp i agree with that and i think the biggest problem is i don't think Kavanaugh has bad coaching skills. I think he is a yes man, though. Like, from some of the stuff that I've seen in certain embeddeds or countdowns and interviews that he's done, it always sounds like he just lets Connor do whatever the hell he wants. So he's just the yes man to everybody. But, to be fair, I I would give his gym a little more credit than Rousey's gym, but just the comparison of one hit star and can't really make any hits on anybody else since then is a problem to me when it comes to gyms. A lot of the bigger gyms get a lot of sh- They get shit for um, one, favoritism, two, gym wars. You'll have mm-hmm. all these young hungry lions in the same camp, in the same room, and you gotta fight each other eventually. A lot of times that shit gets settled in the gym, but you un- unnecessarily leave, um, have fights in the gym that you don't get paid for. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, iron sharpens iron. So while you might not get paid for that, you do get better. So it's like cool. a it's a double edged sword. Like you damned if you do, mm-hmm. and you damned if you don't. So in a hurt business, in the situation where I mean, this is this is not golf. This is the hurt business. So you gotta risk something to get something. And if you're in a camp where you can't grow, you're in a small camp that doesn't have. I'll say you need a phenom coach, not just an average coach, not just a running a good coach. You better have a fucking great coach if you're not in a big camp. But like it Trevor sucks Whitman. for the other guy though, the one that like gets X'd out. You remember Rashad and John Jones? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rashad was going to go fight Shogun for the title, and then he what blew his knee out or something, and that mm-hmm. became uh, that became the John Jones era. After that, we all knew it was going to happen right. eventually. Yeah, but it was like it's just the way it happened. He got X. And to be fair, to be fair, it happens no matter what. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it it happens no matter what, depending on the fighters. Because some fighters, like old school Brazilians, like Anderson Silva and everyone, they take that very seriously where you don't fight your boys. But, or like, even, I was talking to Mo about this a couple weeks ago. I think it was at the pay-per-view for Justin Gaethje or whatever, where I was talking about Roy McDonald's career was screwed up by GSP. Because they would never fight. So he was never going to become champion. So I think that fire inside Rory McDonald early on kind of died out. And then when GSP retired, it kind of came back, but came back a little too late. You know what I mean? Well, here's going back to the Rashad and John Jones situation. That that was, um, which camp was that again? That was uh, Greg Jackson. That was before it was Jackson Wink, right? Yeah. Well, it's still Jackson Wink, yeah. That was before it was Jackson Wink. It was just Jackson, right? There was no Weekly John back then, right? Um, You might be right about that before it became a puppy mill. Hey, turn your mic down. <laughs> yeah, turn your mic around. 
You're doing the opposite right now. This way? Other way. Other way. Have the light facing you. There this you way. go. Yeah, there you go. There okay. you go. He was like speaking um, behind it. Okay. Here's what, here's what I think. If Let's just play it back. Shaw doesn't get hurt. Right? Let's say he doesn't get injured. Does that version of Rashad even beat Shogun? Maybe. 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 Wrestling. Let's say he does. Let's just give him a benefit of the doubt and say he does. Or as he goes to sleep. Let's just give him a benefit of the doubt. Let's say he never gets hurt. He beats Shogun. He's, he still doesn't fend off Jones. Oh, no. That's probably the next fight. And then it creates the whole separation of the, Right. Right. Then, he, the then also, they still met up. They still fought. Oh yeah, Jones and Rash- right, right, right. So it's not like it mattered that he got hurt. I think um, that that still that camp still benefit both guys because Rashad had a, a Hall of Fame worthy career. So did, and so did John Jones. So I think that was the whole point of that that bringing that up anyway was will 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 you benefit from a big camp, i.e. Johnny Walker at Avanaugh's camp, wherever the fuck they call each other. Would he benefit from going to a bigger gym? Would he benefit from going to a gym like ATT, or you know, you know, going to a gym where he's can get pushed by some of the best guys in the world and have good coaching? Would that be to his benefit? Because he is still young. I mean, and that is a thin two hundred five division, bro. It only takes a few. Yuri got two wins, dog, and he's fighting for the championship. Exactly. Yeah. Two good wins, title. I think going to a big camp is beneficial to everybody, but the thing is you gotta choose the right camp for the right fighter. Mm-hmm. Not every not every coach is right for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know where I would put Johnny Walker though. With his fighting style, I don't know what would be a good camp for him. That's the hard part for me. City like, kickboxing. who has that kind of flashiness? City kickboxing? City kickboxing. Actually, that might work. I don't know if he'd be willing to go all the way to New Zealand, but if he's in Ireland, why not? You know what? I, I like it. At least he's going to where there's a everybody in that camp who have a plethora of great strikers. Mm-hmm. I mean, from a champion. plethora of... Flashy, explosive strikers. So if you if your striking is your issue, if you want to, you know, sharpen your tools, sharpen your tools. Which his striking is really good. It's his he, defense. He I feel that 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 hurts him. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you can't train a chin. Like you just can't. You can't. You can't train your chin, but you can train not getting hit. You can yes. train footwork. You can train angles. Because that's the thing. His uh, his flashiness was always a double-edged sword for him. It was either going to overwhelm the opponent and they weren't ever going to like jump in to strike when they needed to, or he's just creating a lot of openings where a well-tactician sharpshooter is just going to take him out. It's, that's what his style always was. So we thought if he was more calculated, he'd be better. But I think he needs to find that mixture between his flashiness but have good enough movement to get out of the situation when needed. Hey, Almost like here? a Tony Ferguson. How do we end up? Because we were talking about the lightweight division. Well, like heavyweight division. Being what? Stale. Yeah. In, um, uh, yeah. Being thin, then we started talking about the young prospects, and then oh. we started talking about oh, certain like, fighters. How did we get over here? Like, how we had hey, man, I... How many left turns did we take? We took a lot, but we just chit chat right now. Oh. But the, the good thing is, uh, here's the good thing: there are there are still a lot of contenders. Like in that division, they're just not. I mean, rec- most recently speaking, we had um, Ryan Span just you know didn't he just just, just choke out on Kudilaba? Superman beat the Hulk. Okay. Yes. Um, and then we just had. Another win by a 205-er with um, Khalil Roundtree bodying. I mean, he ran through. Um, what's his name? He got yeah. his money back. 
That's money back. God damn, I can't remember. The boy owed him five dollars. Oh, Roundtree just beat Roberts. I forgot. I forgot who it was. Carl Roberts. Carl. Uh. Carl something. Is Roundtree not even ranked anymore? Wow. That's surprising. Anyways, long story short. You have some there's some guys at the bottom half of that division they have a shot to like if you they string it together two or three ran, wins we'll be talking about their names uh about this time next year so i wouldn't be too worried about i wouldn't i'm not too worried about the 205 division i'm just saying that it, it does suck that alexander rackage got hurt and leave it at that yeah and like we said, the way that it happened, it does suck for that. Uh, the the division's not completely dead yet. It's just I feel like every other division has had this like rise of young contenders that are rising to the top quite quickly. And two oh five, the old guards just holding strong. Is all it is. Yeah. That is true. Once John Jones left, is you know it created the opening. And one old guy won the title, then another old guy won the title. Yep. Historically, the 205 division has always kind of been a revolving door. If you don't, if you take away Jones, there's never been a long reigning champ at 205. Just once, right? Chuck. Chuck. Chuck had and it. Chuck Tito. Chuck had it for a little bit. And he lost to Rampage. And Tito before him. He lost to Rampage. Rampage lost to Forrest. He defended it once. Right? Once? Dan Henderson. Who? Rampage. Right. He defended it, it once. Wasn't that, none, of, none of them had a long reign. They, they might have defended it once or twice. And yep. then, I mean, who did Tito, I mean, who did, um, who did Forrest Griffin lose his belt to? Was Rashad. it Rashad? Right? Mm-hmm. So Rashad, and Rashad lost to Machida. Yep. Machida lost to Shogun. Shogun Shida lost, lost to Jung. Originally twice. in their first fight. That's right. He got knocked out the second one, so that's, that's undisputed. No, nah, the, the judges said uh, Machida won that one too. Really? Did he? Did he? Did he TKO? Uh... The, the judges said he won the second fight too. He get disqualified for sleeping on the job. Yeah, you know the judges. Yeah, yeah. they'll make up something. <laughs> so, but, but the point with being is that like two hundred five has always historically been the. I mean, one is it's the premier division of the UFC. It's kind of always had Cormier. Been. He defended well, it what, twice, three times. Anthony J- Rumble Johnson and Gustafson. Consecutive or how many times? Not consecutive. Did I fall asleep on this camera? Yep. Cause see it. Mm-hmm. In between there, he got head kicked gonna... by John Jones, right? Yep. I'm just gonna sleep talk this whole way. Didn't he fight Rumble it. twice? He fought Rumble twice, right? Really good question. I don't think so, but really good question, bro. Did he fight Rumble twice? You gotta look that one up. I don't. You know what? Maybe. I do all I remember from the whole that whole thing was Rumble knocking him across the cage, and then Rumble getting choked out. I don't know how he got up from that, bro. I really don't. Mark Dome. Like, he was on his belly and knees after he got hit by Rumble. Looking up at him like, what you do? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how he got up from that. I mean, it wasn't a clean shot. It was a powerful shot. Didn't he, didn't he hit him in like a chest or something like that? What, what did he hit him? I don't remember, but it sent him flying and off his feet. Do you remember that? I remember, I remember Rumble landing a big shot. And then from there, I think he tried to wrestle with Cormier and then got his back taken. That's pretty much how he always loses, though, to wrestlers. Because Koscheck got him like that. Vitor got him, too. He took his back and choked him out as well. Oh, crazy, man. That's that's just that's how you beat Rumble, apparently. Has he fought he, since uh, he went to Bellator? I don't think so. I think he's still recovering from uh, whatever illness he had. 
At least I think. Oh, could be wrong. Boy, blew up though. I remember he blew up. He was big. He was in the um. He was on a good diet with his uh marijuana business and everything. He had the munchies, Popeyes, and Dairy Queen. Let's see. I think he fought Rumble twice. I think. So let's even say he did. Okay, let's say he fought him twice. Obviously, he went two and zero. Um, versus because he, he didn't lose. Like, he he's only lost twice and choked him out the same way twice. Right. These two, he, and then Cormier had the belt in between that. Um, he vacated the go to to win. He won the champ champ status by um, fucking out Stipe. And then oh, he beat Ozemir as well. Okay, he had some wins. Then he went up to uh, heavyweight, got that one. Mm-hmm. Then he defended that one at least once. Yep, he beat um, Derek Lewis. Yep. And wait, uh, real naked show. Um. Outside of that, 205 division, like I, like I was trying to say earlier, it just had a lot of turnover. There was a lot of, a lot of opportunity to be champion because no one was a long-reigning champ except John Jones. He held it for the longest. Um, the only person that knocked him out of there was him. You know, Gustafsson, right now would be a pretty good time for him to go back to light heavyweight instead of fighting that heavyweight. I I heard a rumor of him hinting a return. I don't remember if he was returning to two oh five, but he is returning to the to the octagon. You're right, I I agree. This is perfect time for him to go back to two oh five. Because only two guys the only three guys that beat him like handedly ain't there no more. Omie is uh a, he's a now a kind of desk with a commentary job nice and retired and plump on jones that heavyweight getting ready to make his debut we'll talk about that in a few and anthony rumble johnson is in bellator so gustafson all the big black dudes gone cuz oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Yo, is it's that time. really is that really who we all lost to right that's it dog Wow. That's it. Think about it. Phil Davis. Damn. He ain't there. Damn exactly. Bro. Damn. He, he gone too. He's in Bellator. Damn. It's your time, cuz. Well, I mean, he, he would have to worry about uh, Anthony Smith. He's half. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony Smith. Jamal uh, Hill. Maybe Khalil Roundtree and Ra- Ryan Jamal Spann. Hill. But. I will say he did. He has a win over the current champ. Knocked out uh, Gustafson. Not Gustafson. Gustafson knocked out Teixeira with a million uppercuts. Hit him with all the uppercuts. So did Rumble. Or he hit him with one. Mm-hmm. It'd be a good time for him to come in, go in, make his, make his return. Speaking, well, we can we can jump into the whole. Um, Jones versus Stipe matchup because we've been talking about this for a year. Oh, last year we, we sprinkled it in here and there this year, but now it's it's finally looking like it's about to happen. Um, Jones is in fight camp now. Stipe says he needs a little more time though. Stipe wants to fight somewhere around like September, or October. Jones wants to get that international fight week card. It's booked. Like I know that one is think, it's it's already loaded. Think it'd be a better idea to just like go ahead and run that thing on uh, end of the year then? No, they need oh. to fight soon. In September works for me. August September. I don't know if they got a headliner for the July 30th card. Hmm. Too soon, though. 
Steep it. That's too soon. Yeah, steep it. I wonder why it needs time till like September. You know what I'm saying? Like, what have you been? I know you're a firefighter, but what, what else are you doing? I think it's because he got brutally KO'd. No, the rumor and is he's putting on muscle. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that's another thing too. Beat me to that one. He's probably he put on muscle before the uh, Nagano fight too. Remember, because no, he, he tried no. to put a little bit of that on there too. Because they were talking about how much bigger he was and if that was going to be a detriment to him or not. Oh no! But he didn't, he didn't look. He didn't look big in the uh, the second. He looked the same, Nagano right? Fight. He looked very similar. Yeah. It's not like when Frank Mir put on muscle after Brock Lesnar. Uh, no, it was Shane Corwin, right? That record. Oh, no, you no, no, you're right. It was, it was, it was. Um, it Frank Mir. Yeah, Frank Mir put on all that muscle. You remember that, right? He did. Yeah, yeah. he went from. It didn't look like that transformation, like how he did. A lot of people bulked up around that time. Brock Lesnar forced everyone to bulk up, is what happened. Yeah. Well, Randy Couture was in that division back then too, and he was he was fighting around two twenty five, two thirty. He got out horsepowered. Shane Carwin has always been a big guy. Frank Mir was somewhere around 240, 250 in the first fight, but in the second time, it was more like 270 and diesel. Yeah. Um, if, if, if Steve Bay's committing to that kind of change where he's trying to get above 265, then yeah, he won't, he'll need some time. That's the same thing with Jones. Jones didn't want to come in at 240. See, and he probably walks around, even when he was at 205, he was probably walking around at 230. That's not that big of a deal to get to 10 pounds. But if he's trying to come in and be on fight day, it'd be 270 plus. So he got to get a lot bigger. In all honesty, I don't. I think it's much more simple than that. I, I honestly think that he just had another kid not too long ago. Or whatever. So he's probably enjoying that, being a firefighter. And being somebody that follows his social media, he hasn't really been posting himself in the gym very much, period. So I just think he was out of shape, in all honesty. And he just needs to get back into fighting shape. Because you don't go into a fight with John Jones out of shape. No, 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 no. no. You, you want an actual camp for that. Because he's at the end of his career. He needs this John Jones fight. And whether he wins or loses this tells him if he's ever going to have an actual title fight again or not. Or if this is for the title, I don't know. Probably going to be because... Uh, Probably an interim. Yeah, because I, I don't think the UFC and Francis are going to come to any agreement anytime soon. They, what if yeah, it's all hush-hush? Hush. Like, for us to know, it's like hush-hush. They're trying to create I mean, like, this whole narrative about him not being able to box Tyson Fury and blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, that's a lot of money for the UFC if they, they have a hand in it. True. I mean, is it, though? Yeah, I mean, it, because it's, it's some money as opposed to zero dollars. Yes, it is some money. Because I was going to say, um, they weren't, you know, during the buildup of the Conor McGregor fight, they were all about it with uh, Mayweather, but at the end of it, they didn't seem too happy with their takeaway. I think the, the issue they had with the, the um, Connor versus Floyd was that they lost Connor. Like, he was gone for a while. Right. They, have, they, they couldn't... If he comes back and he's just still competing, I think it's all right. It's just fun. But the fact yeah. that they lost him entirely... That might leave a little bit of sour grapes because they then like think about it, like if Francis is not a young guy, so if he gets that big box that big boxing payday and he has no interest in coming back and fighting in the UFC or for the UFC, and they just lose a another big you know fighter. They lose another yeah. big draw. Here's one good thing though: Francis is committed to these other matchups. He wants to have these other matchups. He wants to. So he says. I think. I, um, I'm just saying, the money changes everything because Connor was committed to all these matchups too before the or after the for after the Mayweather fight, but then he got that payday, 
now nothing's really important to him because his hunger was all about money. Then when he had all that money, that's why he doesn't care about all the fights anymore. Now it's all about just titles. Francis has made it very clear that he wants more than one boxing fight. You know, he wants the that one. He wants to be able to be a boxer and an MMA fighter. That's what he wants out of his contract. And are you really going to take a guy that fights once a year and go, hey, I'm going to let you split between boxing and UFC? Because then you're only going to get him as a fighter once every two years. You know, maybe, maybe two <laughs> fights in a row for two years. I don't know. I just don't think it's profitable in the long run for them to let him do that. So he wants to be like a professional boxer, not like the rule set that they're given for this Tyson Fury and Nogano fight that they're proposing with the four ounce gloves and stuff. I think the only reason why that they're proposing those type of rules is because they want the UFC to kind of agree to it. They want more appeal to it. And I think Tyson Fury just, he's that kind of crazy guy where he's like, oh yeah, I'll try any of this out. Because Tyson Fury even said that he'll fight him in the boxing ring and then he'll do an MMA fight with him. But it technically wouldn't be boxing if they're in a ring with the four ounce gloves. It'd be like some, right? I don't even know what it'd be. Be like it'd pride, be an exhi- you know? It's an exhibition. It should be yeah. an exhibition. I think it'd be an exhibition fight. The reason, the reason why Fury is cool with those rules, is because one, it'll put more control in his camp's um, favor. It'll be out of the boxing commission, so like all the money that he'll be able to generate and all the interest will be then placed on his promotion and not with um, specifically anything to do with boxing. And in addition to that, it's going to not change his legacy. That's like, kind of like part, Floyd. Legacy. Kind of, like, yes. kind of the same way that Floyd, when he fought the uh, the little Japanese kid, um, the exhibition fight, it has nothing to do with his record. It doesn't matter. Win or lose or draw, it's just, a, it's just a payday and just about. That's why I think Tyson Fury is agreeing to this, and I think that's also why um, Francis wants this as well. It won't matter. It would just be a money thing. Yeah. Tyson Fury still I undefeated. Agree. He's still um, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. And let that be that. The promos for that would be insane. Because you know the UFC oh, yeah. promotes stuff. When they promote somebody, they promote them. Oh, yeah. Right. So... I tell you, I tell you what, dog. If they actually that fight goes down, it's gonna be fucking insanely big. And that's why I was saying I don't think it makes sense for the UFC to have no interest because if they, decide, if Francis just decides to go, okay, look, I'm just fucking, I'm not gonna come back to the UFC, but me and Tyson Fury are gonna make this fight happen, and they make the fight happen, he's gonna make a good load of a good bit of money, and the UFC gets zero. So why 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 get zero when you can get a piece? It doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. Why lose a commodity that you can make some money off of just because of pride? And I know Dana does have a lot of that, obviously. Money money talks. It's. I think it goes a little further than just pride for this one. I think in the end, when you let this happen, who's the next person to start demanding it? Who's the next person to start demanding, I want to fight Jake Paul? Who's the next person that wants to be a boxer also and have these exhibition fights. How many how many more fighters do you lose to this? And when you can hold a fighter from doing something, contract because there is contract, that fight's not going to happen anytime soon. So basically what they're banking on is by the time Francis is out of the contract, it will be less interesting because Fury's going to take another boxing fight, so that's going to push that out even further. And people are going to lose interest in it because Francis isn't fighting in the UFC either. He's just kind of a nobody anymore. And you don't have to worry about Sean O'Malley going, hey, I want to go boxing now. You don't have to worry about um, Kamaru Usman going, hey, I'm going to go knock out Jake Paul. You know, because you 
made it clear you are not doing these exhibitions anymore. You tried it with Connor. It failed. Here you go. You got to make a statement. They probably just don't want to agree to the demands that uh, Nagano's like agents pushing. You get what I'm saying? They pr- they, they yeah. got meat on the middle somewhere. Cause I mean, he in the long run, I the title. That. He gonna walk out with a title. Like he recovering <laughs> from his knee injury. By the time that's done with, he ready to go. Right, and then here's the thing though: if you're if you if the UFC is worried about future fighters. Making some kind of uh, money grab play for boxing, they already set the precedent. They already be- they already bet on that rule. They already, it's already been done. You can't go. I'm not gonna. I'm never gonna do this. But then do it, and then go like, oh, well, now I'm afraid for the future. No, no, you've already done it. The precedent's already been set. Like you already allow Connor to go box and then come back. And if you want to say Connor's special in that, so oh oh well, it isn't. You you can't play it any other way now the only way you can play it now is to do those side events i mean you don't have to obviously you can let the you can hey, let the fire out of his contract I it's, know already, what it it's already been set i know what it is man the ufc is not an equal opportunity employer <laughs> <laughs> they're subcontractors so it doesn't even matter like <laughs> yeah, you're right you're right you're right you're right you're right no eoe here <laughs> oh my god <laughs> No, uh, you know the the correct answer to all of this, in all honesty, and the best way to get this this show on the road and allow all of this to happen, and the most profitable version of this that should happen is Dana should actually start Zufa boxing. He started promoting it. He was going to have his own thing. He didn't really like dealing with a lot of the boxers. That's what kind of stifled it a little bit, plus COVID and everything. He had to focus on the UFC. But if Dana White starts Zufa Boxing and has a boxing promotion, anytime these fighters want to cross over, all right, that's fine. But you're doing it under Zufa Boxing. And we're going to make money off you both ways. That way, if you have a fighter like Francis who wants to go back and forth between boxing and the UFC, cool. We're going to profit off every single one of your fights. Not just no one-off, not just this weird thing. I'm going to profit off everything, and you're going to do it under Zoo for Promotions. What happened to that? I remember that was like something a few years ago. Did it go away? Um, It was basically... It started to go. He was dealing with a couple of the uh, boxers, but Dana White was never going to pay the boxers the amount of money they wanted. Yeah, he said so, it, was, it was ludicrous, the amount that... The it was ludicrous. Paid. Right, so he was never going to pay the money that they wanted, so that kind of stifled it a little bit. And then COVID happened, and when COVID happened, he had to, like, all ahead on just focusing on how to save the UFC. He did the right so thing. So Zufa got thrown in the back. So, yeah, I understand why it kind of disappeared. But if they could get that promotion, they could deal with these things a lot easier. But either way, John Jones versus Stipe should be a really good matchup. Just because, do you think he'll be able to take down Stipe if Cormier didn't take down Stipe? Short answer for me is yes. I think so too, because John Jones yeah. took down Stipe, or not Stipe, but uh, Cormier in their mm-hmm. first fight, I believe. Right? Stipe took down Cormier. Which fight, the second or the third one? Uh, I want to say second. All I remember from the second one was he went to the body. He had him looking mm-hmm. like King Hippo. Oh no! It might have been the third one then, because he he was he was amazed at it. He he basically said the only reason why Stipe took me down is because I didn't expect him to. Oh. But. Okay. Okay. What about John Jones? And John, <laughs> can, you think he can take down John Jones? No, no. I'll say for uh, Cormier. If I had a microphone, like, what about John Jones? How do you take 
John Jones just knows how to do shit. I'd be the worst reporter. They'll fire me like day one. First hour on the job. You're out of here, Perez. Go, go, just go. Don't come back. There's either. some. The, the thing about the MMA community or reporting, anyways, is MMA fighters. When it comes to certain questions like that, they just call you fucking stupid and retarded, and then don't answer it anyways. I think it was a uh, Luke Thomas that said that. Um, excuse me. MMA fans don't want actual news. They want just the same old dumb shit about the fighters. They don't want actual news, and they will uh, hate you for asking the right questions. Yep, okay. So either way, Stipe versus John Jones should be a good matchup, depending on when it happens. The only reason why I say when is because if they wait too long and drag it out to, like, December... What? I... Yeah. I don't think it should wait that long. I mean, how long has John Jones took off already? A year and a half or something? Two years. Two years. Almost. Almost two years. So he's mm-hmm. he's I understand he's putting on this this weight and getting uh used to moving around that big. But what about Stipe? Like come on man. You know you want this fight. You were the, the heavyweight that defended the title the most. John Jones is, I mean, besides him messing up, he he probably would have had the record, right? If he never got in trouble or anything? Yeah. He'd be right there at the record. We probably would have seen Rumble versus John Jones at least. We would have seen it. Even though I think, That'd have been great I fight. think Rumble would, still would have lost, but. It would have been good to see something like that. Yeah, that was one of the fights that I wish that we would have got. Hey, we might have got another Anthony Smith rematch, too, with John Jones. Right? Eventually, in, yeah. In that, in that matchup versus Stipe, we, we, can talk, we can talk about that matchup a little bit. I don't really see the takedown being a necessity. No, you don't think so? You think he'll just keep him at range? Wait, does Man. John Jones have the range though? I think he has a four and a half inch reach advantage over Stipe. He got eighty four, right? John Jones. I think Stipe has seventy nine. If I'm not if I recall correctly, look up Stipe. You look up John Jones. He's got eighty. Eighty. So he has four inch, four four and a half, mm. four inch. And a half, yeah. Hey, okay. This is a a question that probably a lot of people wonder because I I always never I never knew. I never knew. I always wondered it myself. When they go by reach, is it like split in half by your reach advantage, or is that literally how much range you have from one one side? So, like, say if somebody they, they, has a four inch reach advantage, is it two for each side, or is it literally four? I think they just they just measure the total distance of your wingspan. Yeah, they, they measure your wingspan and call that the the distance. So technically, that would be two inches on each arm. Okay, that's that. I always wondered that. If your arms are the same distance or length. <laughs> you know, you, your left arm three inches longer than your right arm. What's going on here? <laughs> I don't think it's the hands that's the issue, though. I think it's the, the his kicking game. Yeah. That's why I think Steep is going to run into the most issues. The oblique kicks, the leg kicks, um, all the distance strikes. I think he's going to struggle with that pretty heavily. Even the fact that um, Jones is one really good at it, two, that heavyweight is gonna it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more impactful. These guys these guys aren't as fast. They're not as nimble. They don't move as well. So they get hit by these. They're they're there to be hit more by these kind of strikes. Now it does take only one shot to knock someone out. Stipe has power. Um, so he'll be able to, if he gets in range, he can probably do some damage, but, um, fortunately for Jones, he doesn't really struggle with that kind of, he doesn't struggle with boxers ever. Mm -hmm. 
but big power punches are never it's never been an issue for him. He usually struggles with combination strikers and guys who are athletic. Stipe is none of those things. Stipe is athletic for a heavyweight. Stipe is moderately athletic for a big white dude. That's he what I'm not, saying for a heavyweight. He is not, he's not. I want to consider him a, like he's not a freak athlete. Like when you think of a when you use the word athletic, then Yuri Pohashka, that's athletic. Well, that's what I think. I get that. that. That's athletic. why I said for a heavyweight. What okay, other so, heavyweight in the heavyweight division right now is more athletic than Stipe? Oh, Cyril Gon. Cyril's definitely more athletic. I would even say okay. Francis is more athletic. Pure no, I think Francis isn't very athletic, period. I think he's just explosive. What is athleticism? Not explosion. It's not just explosion, though. Curtis Blades. It's, huh? it's a big component. Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades. I'll take Curtis Blades. I'll take that. Totally. You know. I mean, there's not many elite athletes at heavyweight, though. There's, there's probably... Everybody's... Average. Tui Voss is an average athlete. Vlaski is an average athlete. They're just they're good. They're great fighters, but they're average in, as as far as athleticism. When you look at athleticism, and you look at the NBA and the NFL, those are freak athletes. These guys are average. These guys are average at best. And even in this game, the guys who are outliers like Cyril Gunn and Jones and um. Francis, and even if you want to count Curtis Blades, I don't, but okay. He's slightly above average in my eyes. Um, they're not at all on par with world-class athletes. They're just world-class for fighting. Even, um, I think fucking Tyson Fury is a better athlete than any of the guys we just mentioned. I agree. I do. So, I agree with that. That's what I'm saying. For the Steve heavyweight Steve division Steve we like, have right now, Stipe is one of the most athletics in the heavyweight division we have right now. Bro, if we gave him a number, right? Let's say if 100 was peak athlete and zero was... I'm not saying he's the greatest athlete of all time. I'm saying he's one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division currently. Mark, I know you're a Stipe fan. I I know this, bro. I'm not doing shit on your boy. No, but I mean, who else in the... Are you gonna tell me that two of us is more athletic than him? Are you gonna tell me you fucking that... to me? No, they're both like, uh, a- like a bu- two of us is slightly below average. If let's say eighty overall was average, right? Athleticism. I would say two of us would be like a seventy-eight. Deep A would be like an eighty-two. Like they're not. We're not talking about freak athletes here. We're talking about guys who are I'm not trying to say he's a freak athlete. That's what I mean. When when you list. Uh, at, uh, attribute as a strength, it has to be above average. In, in that case, then, like there's a reason why I put the caveat at heavyweight right no, now. Well, because well, that that is you, an actual caveat. Like, because what number would you give Cyril Gon? Like overall athleticism, mm-hmm. I'd probably put him somewhere in like seventy. I don't think he's that athletic either overall. Hey, you but, put him at seventy, but you and so Stipe is a better athlete then. I have Stipe at 82. No, I would put I would put Ciro Gon as a better athlete over Stipe. Okay, but okay. I'm saying Stipe okay. is one of the better athletes in the heavyweight division because when you look at, you know, Curtis whole, Blades, I would put Stipe whole, over Curtis Blades. Talking about the whole, like, cardio. Uh, the whole, cardio, cardio fuck it, explosiveness, yeah, that, power, yeah. everything. Like, an athletic person overall. So you need to put that all together. I'm not going to put Tua Vasa there. I'm not going to put... Uh, Naganu there because he struggles a lot in the cardio position. Since the first you know. fight, yeah, sure. The first fight he got out wrestled, but he still yeah. was there. Here's the thing: I'm not going to put Volkov there. I'm not going to put Rosenstruck. I'd put up there. Dawkins definitely not. Tybura no. Hey, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. You say you, you're taking Rosenstruck's athleticism over Rosenstruck's a better athlete than Francis Naganu? I think right so. Now? Yeah, I would take that. Really? Wow. Yeah, I would take that actually. Wow. I would say one thing because the first is only thing he has is athleticism. He's like he doesn't have. He's not a technical striker. He just became a wrestler. That all he has is power. explosive power. That's it. That first word that you just used. Explosive. Explosive. Yes. It's very explosive, explosive but... power. Right. Because Derek Lewis has power, but he's not fucking explosive. He's not an athlete. He just he has power. You explode. But he's not explosive. You get hit though. <laughs> right. You will expose your, if you get hit by I, I didn't say Derek Lewis was an athlete <laughs> either. No, no athlete, bro. Not, not claim, no athlete. 
No. I'm just saying that he his he has power, not explosive power. Francis is an athlete, believe it or not. Like he, I think, if I gave him a grade, even for heavyweight, let's just give them their own little situation here, not comparing to the rest of the athletes in the game. Just comparing the athletes at heavyweight, I would say Francis is somewhere in the 90s. As far as athleticism is concerned, we'll he's probably up, like in, we'll pull up the stats on the video game and they'll tell us everything. Oh yeah, yeah, I guarantee you, <laughs> he has everything. a higher athleticism rating in the video game over anybody we mentioned at heavyweight, so except for the maybe video game gone. stats. Except for maybe gone. Dude, Stipe is probably like an 82 overall. Um, and then Curtis Blades is like an 81, 82, maybe 83. I mean, like he's not a, a great athlete to me or even exceptional. The only two other guys really is gone and Francis. There's no real f- athletes in heavyweight. The only other one that's that's even considered to be remotely close is garbage and out of the game. And that was um, like Hardy, but he's a former pro uh, NFL All Pro. So of course he has a, a high level. Needs of- a fucking inhaler to get through a fight. No, but what I'm saying is like. He- when I measure athleticism, it's not because stamina and well, cardio. Wait, stamina and cardio are done by guys who are just cardio heads. Like you look at Kobe, he's he's a re- really good cardio athlete. Nick and Nate Diaz are both really good cardio athletes. They're not explosive. Like, yeah, that's can, what I'm saying. You can't just focus it on one position though. Like an overall athlete to me has all of that, and you can get that out of like somebody like Stipe. Uh, this is literally somebody's stacking the stats somewhere else. They put all their shit for Francis on explosive power, and they didn't put it really anywhere else. They're starting to like take some of that and put it on fucking cardio a little bit now, but explosive power, or he just sits back and doesn't do anything for fucking ever. That's what Francis is. I'm just saying, at the at the end of the day, literally look at the... Heavyweight division, and would you not put Stipe as one of the top athletes in that heavyweight division? I would not, but that's only because I don't believe he's a good athlete. A, a good athlete. I think he's above average at best, and, and, and that's just being generous. But above average in the heavyweight I, I think, division is a good athlete. <laughs> like no, no, I mean because, even for heavyweights, the, the the only the only reason he would even be anywhere near the top is just because there's only a sample of two. There's only two guys that are even. Above average athletes, and that's Francis exactly and all I'm saying there. Right, right. I'm saying but there's still, not a lot of competition in this, but as one of the biggest athletes, he is one of the bigger athletes in the heavyweight division. That's, that's why I said there has to be that caveat. Mark, Mark that, that's like saying he's. A I'm not going to say he's nearly athletic. There's nobody in the heavyweight division that I would compare to <laughs> John Jones' athleticism. Saying, that's what I'm saying. Like that's, that's what the, that's the equivalent of saying that. Like it doesn't make him an athlete just because he's a. Better than a better than the guys he's up against. That's the thing that concerned. y'all are mis you're misunderstanding about me at all. That's why I said he's one of the more that I said more athletic in the heavyweight division. I never I'm said he was like I some think- kind of freak athlete. The only right. freak athlete I ever think was in the actual heavyweight division is Brock Lesnar. That's a good example, but Brock like, Brock's not Brock isn't the same boat to me as Francis. Mm-mm. As far as athleticism is he- concerned. Ath- being an athlete, okay, I'll put it to you this way. Francis learned how to wrestle and was able to out-wrestle Stipe, who's been wrestling his, his whole life. Francis started wrestling on Tuesday. His athleticism and his freak ability helped him become better at it. He, okay. He, 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 he adopted a skill set that he didn't have before and was able I, to implement that in a fight. I would argue that one, too. Right, you don't get that without athleticism. You, can't, you have a guy who's an average athlete and you try to teach him technique, He's not going to be able to outdo a guy who's who has athleticism. In that short Let's span. be honest about Francis's actual wrestling, though. Let's be honest about it. Yes, he did out wrestle. He did out wrestle Stipe in that fight, but was it really out wrestling and technique, or was it really just overpowering him and holding him down? I think it was both. Like he did learn some technique. But I don't think I would attribute that to athleticism did that. I think he just overpowered him and laid on him. This is something that we've demonized other fighters for. Oh, excuse me. Well, Stipe All got the, the time. Victory, Stipe got the victory over Francis by laying on him. Correct. We go, but so it's more impressive seeing Stipe lay on top of somebody as powerful as Francis than it is for a guy just to overpower and hold down. Can we agree on that? Oh no! 
Really? He got his, no, because he in that fight, in that first fight, they, um, Francis couldn't get up. Even though Stipe was able to dominate him with the grappling, take him down every single round, and keep him down every single round on the way to a unanimous victory, unanimous decision victory. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, when they fought the second time, Francis was able to hit a switch because he had because Stipe had him against the cage. He hit a switch, took Stipe's back, started hurting him with shots, and then took him down again, or knocked him out in the second round. Um, mm-hmm. But then you look at his wrestling against Gon, he came in with shot knees and was able to just basically John Fitch him in a matter of a year. He learned how to do that in a matter of a year. That's why I thought that's it was impre- impressive. That's impressive. With, that's with impressive. Gon. Like, I was surprised that he was able to do that against Gon. Yeah. Coming from I mean not that. having no wrestling to that. <laughs> zero. That's wrestling. what I'm saying. From having zero wrestling to that, that is still impressive. impressive. But I'm just saying, it's not, it's not like he became a god at wrestling. That's I mean, but he went from zero to like 60. And his 60 was able to dominate a guy. He went from <laughs> zero to knowing how to do his, a power double. Right. His his wrestling was zero in the first fight against Stipe. He couldn't t- stop a takedown to save his life. Um, right. And then the, sec- the second fight, not only was he able to stop the takedown, he was able to reverse the position. Like, it's, it's one thing to stuff a takedown, but it's another thing to completely turn it on its head and you are now in an offensive position. That's a big leap. Hold on, hold on. What would you guys rather watch? Stipe versus Francis 3 or John Jones versus Francis 1? John Jones versus Ooh, Francis. Why, why do we have to choose? I want both. I want both too, but I don't think it's going to happen. I want both. I think Stipe, he's, if he loses to John Jones, I think it's, it's a wrap for him. It's a wrap for him. But so. if he wins, we'll get that one, and then we'll eventually get Francis versus John Jones. The, the reason why I say it's a wrap for Steve Bay, because even though Steve Bay could probably beat most of the people on the, in the heavyweight division, even after that, I don't think he has the motivation for it. Steve Bay is another one of those that wants titles or nothing right now. Like, How old is he? Uh, he's getting close to 40, isn't he? He's up there. I want to say 39, 38, 38 maybe. That's what I'm he saying. He's getting close already. to 40. I don't know. I'm getting another. 39. 39? Yeah, I, mean, I, so, I don't know. I don't, well, the, the, given the fact that he's never even quit his job as a fireman, I don't think, I don't think he's too pressed about the wins and losses. Especially given the fact that he's still going to be at the top of the division if he loses to Jones. He's fighting for an interim title. He'd be one or two fights out of the title again if he strings together some wins. And you, like you said, he has an edge over most of the division. The only guys I see giving him real issues is Curtis Blades. Obviously, Francis is already knocking the fuck out. Jones, that's it. I don't think he'll struggle against Cyril Gaon. I, th- I think it'll be a great matchup, but I don't, I don't think he'll particularly struggle. Yeah, but you also got to remember, I think it's more along the lines. I don't think it's really he's worried about his career or stats-wise. I think he wants titles or nothing, but he also feels like he's been disrespected over and over again by the UFC. Interesting. Like, he got, they've, I, they've had their problems over and over again, too. That's the interesting thing about me about about him because he's gotten so many title shots. How is he being disrespected? Like he got the autumn, the rematch with uh, Cormier after being knocked out. Cormier knocked him, flat, slapped the fuck out. It wasn't. He immediate. had to sit out forever it, it too. It wasn't immediate. It wasn't immediate because he did fight. Um, fought Curtis Blade, not Curtis Blades, but Derek, um, Lewis. Derek Lewis in in the middle of that. He did, but he didn't fight another fighter. He didn't fight, have another fight to gain the title access. Well. What I mean by that is you literally have the greatest of all time, heavyweight. You you lost he lost his title to Daniel Cormier. Mm-hmm. Then you know, Daniel Cormier basically runs from that fight saying, I will not fight Stipe again and refused it even though the UFC told him that they could do it again, they're gonna rematch. And then Daniel Cormier ran from it, goes, Hey, I can't because I'm injured and I need surgery. But then takes the Derek Lewis fight right after that. That was slighted right off the bat. And then after he does the Derek Lewis fight, they do the rematch. And they were already betting on Daniel Cormier to win because they already set up the Brock Lesnar fight. Oh, I mean. So they slighted him again. He still had, he didn't have to do anything to get another title fight is my point. Well, he sat out. They, they wanted him right. to do more, but he sat out. Like, he literally had to say, fuck you, I'm not fighting anymore until I get this fight. 
Like, hey, but but where's his leverage other than the fact? Fact that unless you're just going by legacy, because yeah, he does have the most uh, def- title defenses in heavyweight division history. But the heavyweight division doesn't have a long list of title defenses. What is his title defense record? Three, three. Yeah, three. What the fuck? Who cares? Like, you don't deserve. Well, considering shit. nobody could get past one. Fair enough, but I'm saying like it's what? not like he's done some amazing feat. He just, I mean, he has the. It'd be like one or two, edge. right? One or two. It was one. It was one before because everyone thought Kane had two, but they were separated. Kane defended it once, lost, and then defended it again. Stipe did three consecutive. Right, and then let's let's just if, if you're going to give him credit for that, you're only giving him credit credit for past accomplishments. He got knocked out in this, the title fight versus um, Daniel Cormier. He got knocked out. Whether or not Daniel Cormier wanted to fight that fight in a rematch again or not. They still fought twice after that, right? They have two more fights. Yeah, but he had to fight for both of those. So the yeah, after, he, after he won the belt back, it was... Yeah. Well, he, he won the belt back, true. and they gave it right away to Daniel Cormier. You know what? You know what I mean? They immediately Cormier go, hey, was gonna fight Brock. here's your next fight. That was You remember Brock came in the, uh, the octagon mm-hmm. and did his little Something. thing, mm-hmm. only to go back to WWE and F5 everybody? Shove me now, shove me now, yeah. get slept later. Yeah, I remember that. Um, <clears throat> but this is not, like I said, I, uh, I, I just don't believe Stipe had much leverage in there because he, because he, the way he lost, and he already wasn't a heavily marketable person anyway. Like, that's why for UFC, they're like, look, we have this guy who's the dominant champion, but he's not moving any numbers. That's like, true. You think, you said that's John Jones don't move numbers, Stipe don't do shit. No, I mean, I agree with that. I'm uh, I'm not disagreeing with that. That's why I didn't even bring up the fact that the other reason why he felt slighted was when he defended his title against um, Overeem, Overeem got paid way more money than he did, and he was champ. Mm-hmm. Overeem's a star. He, he always has been. Like, I think Stipe was only getting paid, like, four fifty, and Overeem got paid six 600000 plus pay-per-view points for both of them. So he he was kind of pissed about that too, you know. He's like, how, how does the champ get so underpaid versus the challenger? So I wonder, do you happen- see, got like a contract thing. Like, if you become champion, do you get paid more? You know, it does. It, yeah. it is there. There are championship clauses in there. If you become champion, your pay increases to so and so. But it also depends on what contract you agreed to. So That's why this is Charles Oliveira got screwed because he him not making him not making weight quote unquote that point five cost him championship money because mm-hmm. the moment he made the walk he had to vacate title it cost him championship money for that bout versus Justin Gaethje and the next bout he will have versus whoever because he won't be champion walking out to the cage plus thirty percent had to go to Gaethje for missing weight so he got fucked yeah. Like, as far as money's concerned. Yeah. That's a whole different podcast for that one. All the conspiracy yeah. theories on that one. <laughs> well, I mean, why not do it now? We ain't got shit else to talk about. There's no good fights to come up. It's coming up right now. I mean, what are you talking about? The whole Holly Holm card. You know, you know Holly Holm's on that card. Uh, <laughs> Holly Holm was five years ago, dog. See, more than five years ago. Is she gone, cuz? Who is she? Who is she? Who is she fighting? Let me, let me browse over it real quick. Uh, um, Caitlin Vieira. Yeah. yeah. The women's bantamweight division. That division dude. needs some new life. And that division is stale as fuck. Holly Holm be stopping all the new life from getting past her. No disrespect to the preacher's daughter, but look, man, I'd rather talk about the fucking thing on the scale. And her fight with Caitlin. So good luck. Hope it's a good, good, good fight. And, yeah, yeah th- these fights are like if you're a fan of the sport, please watch it. Oh, if for sure. If you're yeah, yeah. Uh, casual, you probably won't have a good time. The the co-main event on that card is much more interesting in my. Yes, it is. That's probably the only. Well, I'm not gonna say that because you know these guys are trying to make a name for themselves. Make a so. state. But if you want to see a good fight, Ponzinibbio versus um, Michelle Pereira is actually a good fight that should be fireworks it starts early too so that's a good thing comes on at 7 p.m main card 
I like it. Prelims are all right too, though. I mean, not, that it, actually, if you're not, if you're a casual, don't watch the prelims. No, it's good. It's good. And look, you the just because there's no star power, aim wise, doesn't mean those guys aren't all those guys and gals don't come out there and put on the show. Oh, they're gonna so, put on the show. But if you're a casual, I don't know if it's for you. This one, I don't know. I don't know. You only get those experience points one way, dog. When you go for, like, the last fight card or whatever, some of the people that nobody knows who the hell they are put on the best shows last one because they all, they all want it. It's facts. They want it. Andre Petrovsky. Keep yes. that dude's name in your mind. He's doing something. Middleweight division. Up and coming. Ultimate fighter did, alumni. Did um a question? Did Kamaru versus Leon Edwards get announced? I seen something for uh, August actually. Where? The internet. You know where? No, 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 no. <laughs> where is this fight taking place? What what state? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let me see. But I know on the internet it. I saw something of it. I saw it on the internet. I I could tell uh, <laughs> Little Eddie Bravo if he's seen something, and he'll he'll dig it up real quick. Mm. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but either way, I hope that fight finally was. Well, it's, it's all on Kamaru, right? Because his hand, he had to get hand surgery or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Is he gonna be like the first champion to like? Lap his division. No. No. Didn't Demetrius do that? Did he have like well he fought how many times did he fight somebody twice? Mm-hmm. Is one masking. Uh he fought Pickett twice. <clears throat> On his um, title reign? Well the first time wasn't his title reign. That he fought him, but he had a rematch with him. Okay. But he had uh, him, Joseph Benavidez, Henry Cejudo. Um, who else? I can't remember if Tim Elliott was twice or not. But, yeah, I think those were the main ones. I mean, him and uh, Israel... Or like fighting dudes twice in their division, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? That was my that was my mention. I was gonna say uh, Israel's yeah. close. Lap in the division. Is Rob twice? Vittori twice. Now he's um he got he's got schedule versus Cannoneer. After Cannoneer, I think that will be the, that will be it. He, he will have lapped the division. Uh, you guess still got Sean Strickland out there. Pending uh, uh, a cont- not a contender though. Pending on his uh fight with uh Pereira. Pereira, yeah. That might be a hey, bro. I think he might get knocked the fuck out. Who? Pereira. I think Pereira's destined to fight Izzy again and and to at UFC. He's been bodying everybody, bro. Not his last fight. His last fight was kind of not what you expect. How but did he earn the victory? He earned the victory. He did enough. He did enough. It was a close fight. It was, it was a lot of grappling involved. It, it was Imagine. one of those. It was one of those that like okay, Testers. I'll give you the nod. You got the test fight. I feel like see. It, how it was a good do. test fight, but it nothing in that fight said that you deserve to be, you know, in there with Izzy, and Izzy's not going to just walk you. Oh, well, Izzy's not grappling him. Oh no 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 no. no. I think and neither is a Sean, chess matchup. Neither is Sean Strickland. Strickland's a volume striker. Yeah. Grappler. So I don't think he's gonna have, gonna have to worry about those things in That's any July of those 2nd, right? I, think, I believe so. Let me see. Let me check. Which one? The um the Strickland versus Pereira. Pereira? Yeah. yeah. Which card is it on, you know? It's July second, I believe it is. July fourth, you mean, right? Second, July fourth is a Monday. July second is a Saturday. Okay. Yeah, it's the same one as Izzy Cannonier. Okay. You mean okay. Holloway Volkanovski three? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. All 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 the above. Yes. 
That card yeah. is, is stacked, and I have to work. Wow. And Pedro Mo- or Sean O'Malley actually trying to get in the top ten. He called wow. that boy uh, wow. uh, prelim Pedro. Ow. Bro, oh, look at this card. It's I mean, fucking loaded. I know. At the I bottom, know. Robbie Lawler versus Brian Barberina is the opener. I know. I know. I got to work. Ow. Hurts my feelings. And I got to work at good. night at that. There's a lot of good fights on there. I ain't treating you like this. Yeah. He requested it. No, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. Did you allow them to? Um. Fuck, man. This is okay. So let's let's say, for instance, right? Rare comes in, knocks Sean Strickland out. Does he automatically get a title shot? Bro, if he molly wops fucking Sean Strickland, yes. he's getting a fucking title shot just because of history. He's going to leapfrog whomever believes they have a shot at him. Paulo. Who's he fighting? Is he fighting Rockhold? Is that confirmed? I thought, Co- no, I thought Costa was getting. It's not fully confirmed, but yes, it's supposed to happen. Is that, is that, I thought Costa was supposed to go to 205. Man, speaking of this dude, bro, he got some issues. Like, what the is he do to this man? Vitor just made it worse. I think you know what I'm saying. I think I think that fight. No, no, it was the bottle of wine. Bro, I I think he underestimated. That was some fucking wine. I want that bottle of wine. I think he completely underestimated Izzy and then got embarrassed. Yeah, his feelings and ego was super hurt. Well, that uh, Italian did him in too. That well, was a that much was more after. competitive fight. That was a much more competitive yeah. fight, though. Because Co- Costa did look good at points in that fight. It was, but I'm just saying, like, what kind of wine was he drinking, bro? Good shit. The good, good shit, apparently. Brazilian acai wine. Yo, that shit made him uh, shave his whole head off and get new hair. <laughs> like, like surgically. <laughs> like, yo. Like, come on, man. What kind of wine Not is he wine. drinking? What kind of wine is that? I want some. Uh, all I'm gonna say is it's no coincidence that they put that Alex Pereira fight on the same card as Izzy title defense. That's the December fight, the end of the year. Either fight. one of Tell me yeah, that. either one of those guys have a legit claim to the title shot next. John Strickland and yeah. Oh yeah, because right, exactly, exactly. You so don't even it makes say sense. It. Exactly. Everyone else is like not there yet. They've either lost or they're not there. Well, Cannoneer's getting his shot, right? Right. Mm-hmm. The only way all this gets skewed and everything changes is if Cannoneer wins. He's got a shot at winning. Ooh. He does have a shot at winning. You he's can't say he change. doesn't. I mean, he it doesn't change anything. He's athletic as shit. That's gives him. He gives. He gives him a shot. He can. He can hurt him and put him away. But I say Izzy wins nine times out of ten. Yeah, I agree. But then you have the Strickland Pereira fight, and the winner of that is probably gonna be the end of the year. Like, like I'm assuming December. December when's uh, what day does like uh, New Year's Eve fall on? Please don't be uh Saturday. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, let me pull it up real quick. Please don't be a Saturday. Please be like a Monday or something. And then the couple days before, we could get the end of the year card like we usually do. It's and a Sunday. Then... Sunday? It's a Sunday. New Year's Eve is Saturday. Yeah, New Year's Day is New Sunday. Year's Day is Sunday. Oh, boy. I don't know if they'll do uh, a December 31st fight. You never know. They have, right? Or December yeah. 30th or something. And they started earlier than usual. That would be nice. I mean, I don't see why not. Because they can't do it the week before, right? Oh. Because what? I just found another heavyweight athlete. I would say it's definitely above any of the other athletes we already mentioned. Tom Aspinall. He's a much better athlete than... I would say he's a better athlete than Stipe, uh, Blade. Him and Blades are probably like close, but I think he's a better athlete overall. Frank Mir Jr. Frank Mir Jr. Yeah, I think he's I'll take that. There's, 
This is, that's another athlete. There you go. So, guys, look, see, I'm not biased toward white guys. I okay. No, Steve Bacon's is white. Maybe we'll get like a uh, middle of December before Christmas type of fight <laughs> with Izzy and the winner of Strickland and Pereira. You know what I'm saying? Headliner. Yeah. Unless Cannoneer wins, then they're going to have the rematch. Or he's the co main event and Francis is fighting. The winner out of John Jones and Stipe. That's is Francis going to be ready by then? That's the thing. We don't know. I, when I'm not going to lie. Have, I don't see Francis actually fighting in the UFC again. When did he have surgery? That's the question. Was it in February? Mid-February? Or was it early March? And it take about it takes about six to seven months because he fought so, serial in January, correct? Okay. And then you know he had to get his surgery in after that, so sometime after that. And well, I know he didn't prolong it to like April or something. I know it had right, to be no, between February and March. Sometime he's already working February, out. He's already working March. out. He's already working out now. So his recovery is there. Like he's on the road to recovery now. It takes roughly, depending on how good your surgeon is. I know for major sports athletes, they their recovery is somewhere between six to seven months. And then from there, it's a matter of getting back into whatever sport shape you're in, but your your mm-hmm. legs recovered. So for so if he did it in February, he should be fine by the time um that fight's over and they announce another one. We at least have a camp and be ready to go. Fair. If he had, if he had the surgery in February, he should be well within the, uh, the, the point of getting to the recovery point now. Because it's usually six months is the whole timeline. Six to seven months. It depends on a lot of things, obviously. The severity of the injury, the capability of the doctor. What was it? And the, the ACL? And the ability- any ability to recover by the athlete. It was just ACL. Right? Like, their, like their age. Yeah. Um, I think it was. It yeah. Was ACL. Not both? Not MCL and ACL? Oh, no, I don't know, but was he was both. he was able to perform on it. It, didn't, it wasn't like it didn't give out in the fight. Like, you saw how Rackett just knee just gave out in the middle of the yeah. fight? That's a different thing. Well, that That's thing completely thing. detached. Right. I think That's his was more thing. of a tear. Different thing, a different timetable. Because you see that happen all the time, all the time in pro sports. An example was like, remember when Teddy Bridgewater got hurt um, in training camp? It took him like two years before he was back on, the, like back playing. It took him like a long, a long time to he because his knee like completely ripped off the bone, um, but not in contact. The same as um, not Prohaska, but um, Alexander Rakic. Then, like, you'll see a guy get injured, like, they tear their knee in the game, and then they'll, but it, they'll go back to, with, with contact, and then they'll go come back the next year, and they'll be just fine. But Something you also got to remember, that means a lot. It, it also depends on how the John Jones Stipe fight and when that happens. Because mm-hmm. if that happens late September, like we're thinking, late September when we're thinking, for a heavyweight turning around by December is really fucking quick. I for a heavyweight, John Jones would do it. John Jones if, would do it. I guarantee you, John Jones, if he doesn't get injured in the fight. I was gonna say that it depends on injury and if it's a quick one. If it's a quick fight where where there's no injury, yeah, it'd be Jones could definitely go again. Yeah, in December. I think Steve John Jones would. That's what I'm. Steve is not that. Steve is never that active. Yeah, Steve is never that active. Even even with it, without injury, he hasn't he been active in a long time. I don't think he's ever been very active. He's a full time firefighter still. So he used do- to fight twice a year before he was champ. He used to fight a- around twice a year, I think, like earlier on when he was still wearing the Croatian shorts. But ever since then, I don't think he really has been. But that's how all heavyweights really are. There's not very many active heavyweights. 
You're not a deep, deep enough pool to be active, really, even if you want it to be. Well, even right. with a light heavyweight, they they don't have that that many active light heavyweights either. No. I don't think that the I don't think they like in those once you get to middleweight, you're not fighting four times a year. I mean, the like, most active he, middleweight to me is uh smiling Sam. Yes, can that boy be popping up on like whatever card you could think of, and you're just like, oh, I didn't know who he was fighting. You're like he was fighting again. He's yeah, fighting again. What that's the, the most they, active middleweight that I could think of. Well, the reason why Sam LV hasn't been cut is I think whenever the UFC calls him, he says yes before he even knows any information. They'll be like, mm-hmm. you're, you're fighting? He'll be like, yes. And he'll be like, okay, whatever. And they, just, they don't even that's – that's the only reason he's still in the UFC. Because there's been so many fighters that got cut and are, that are no longer on the UFC active roster. Is he on the roster, though? LV? Sam LV? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Bro, he but lost he like is. a lot of fights in a row. But he's you, he's the he's yes auto- man that all he, he always says yes. He doesn't care who it's, who it's against, and he'll fight as many times as he can. And they're always exciting fights, whether they're competitive or not, is a different story. Like everyone knows he's not going to be champion. Everyone knows he's just going to be that name to fight. But he's entertaining to watch. Okay. Speaking of that, somebody that we know that's not going to be champion, American Cowboy. His fight got pushed back to next month sometime, June 18th, mm-hmm. I believe. Is this the end? Does the Cowboy ride off in the sunset? It was supposed to be his last fight. Yep. And I think it's supposed to be Joe Luzon's last fight. I don't and I think know they... about him. He he's like wishy washy about whether or not it's his last one. So is Cowboy. I think Cowboy he... will fight until the day he dies in that ring. Yeah, I want to say that like, you don't retire from what you love. Like if if he's the game will get rid of him when it's ready. Yeah. Yeah. So and... I'm, I'm not even. Yeah, I don't think I don't really. As long as he wants to, he has a shot. He'll he'll fight. If UFC cuts him, he'll just go to Bellator. I don't think it. I, don't I don't like him in bare knuckle, honestly. Yeah. I don't think he does either of those. I think if the UFC cuts him, I think it will be the end of him. Because I don't think he wants to fight for another promotion. You think this is it? Yeah, I think I think he's one of those that if he's not in the UFC, he, he ain't going to do it anymore. You know what? Speaking of that. Makes sense. Retirement type. Uh, just being on the subject of retirement and the subject of fighters in their last fight. What in the world are we gonna do with Nathan Diaz? Who does who's his next matchup? Is it is is, is it his last fight? I think well, it is his last, last fight. fight in the UFC. I think that's it for him. Yeah, I think. I mean, gone. it's his last fight on his contract, and I don't think he renews it. I think he's gone after that, so he could yeah chase other endeavors. Honestly. You like how it you want to, who do you want to see him matched up with in the last fight? Anybody? Well, well according to the the leak and the war room of the UFC is Hamzat. So, shit, if he fights Hamzat, if he somehow does anything to this dude and Hamzat doesn't run through him, wow. If he does the same thing he did against Leon Edwards and loses majority of the fight and in the last minute, however long it was, stuns him, points at him, and laughs at him, is he, how's that going to take a little hit on the stock? You know what I'm saying? The stock going to go down by like 3-4% if that happens. Or he could fight Gilbert Burns, or he could fight Dustin Poirier, or he could fight... Chandler, he's got some options, honestly. Yeah, there's always McGregor again, which I think is the one that they keep trying to wait for, but he keeps trying to push to get a fight. That's what I was gonna say next. Connor, he can always do the trilogy with Connor and call it a day. Big payday. Fuck it, I I'd love to see him versus Tony Ferguson. Um, yes. There, there, there's nothing but options for Nathan Diaz. Nathaniel has all the options. He does. Which one is the most likely? 
Uh, Connor or Poirier. In my head. But for some reason, they cannot get... Even though both want the fight, they cannot get the fight done for between uh, Nathan and Poirier. If it's not Nate versus Hamza, I definitely want to see um, Nate versus McGregor 3. Um, I think it's a, <clears throat> a good fight. Comeback fight for um, McGregor, given that he's been out for so long. But um, also, I think it's like a good matchup for both guys. I say Edge Diaz, for sure. I mean, he has a cardio edge. <clears throat> and the fight goes the distance. Uh, and if it's a five-round fight, I give the a huge edge to um, Nate. I don't think he's, I don't think he does that bad in a five-round fight versus Hamza either. Hamza faded heavily versus Gil. Well, well Gil took it to him, though, the second round. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. But Gil I don't know if that was Hamza. Uh, uh, just a big lightweight. Yeah. So is, so is Nate. He's a big lightweight, too. I think he's, he's put on enough weight now to where he's a true welterweight. Yeah, I think so. Not muscle-wise, but just, like, weight-wise, where he's not mm. draining himself to make 170. Right. Yeah. I mean, maybe, I guess. I, I don't really see. Because, like, when I think of... Bahamzat's a middleweight, cutting down to 170. He's a big, he's a big 170. Yes. He'll be a small middleweight, though. He'd be, a, he'd be average-sized middleweight. I mean, he'd be, I mean, yeah, okay, okay, average is fair. Because if you look at the middleweight division, <clears throat> they're all pretty big boys, except for Whitaker and um, Alvin. Everyone else is pretty big. They're all coming from closer to 200. They're closer to 205 size. Oh, like, like, I don't Natural even know how. Natural 205. Right. right. They're all bigger guys. Like, I mean, Brunson. Um, Brunson's pretty big, pretty big guy. I say um, Cannoneer and Brunson. And maybe for well, Cannoneer was a heavyweight. Cannoneer was a heavyweight. Yeah, his his weight's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Costa all the Costa's a 205er. Right. Let's right. be real. Let's be real. Strictly, Cannonier, he's probably average. He's, he's average, average, average. He's a middleweight. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a middleweight. He's a, he's a true yeah. middleweight. A middleweight, yeah. Then um, Vittori is a little bit on the bigger side. Closer to 205. He is to 85. So, yeah. I think, I think Hamza in, in middleweight would be an average middleweight, like a, a standard middleweight. But he's a really big 170, the same as Kamaru. I mean, he's a big 170 as well. So, um, that's what I'm thinking of. When I think of, like, big 170s or whatever, I, I guess Nate would be an average 170 or a, a standard, if that. Have you I don't seen Connor, though, right now? I don't know what weight class he's going to be in. Weight <laughs> classes were actually contested by natural weight. Diaz would be a 170 year. Connor right that's now. that's how I look at it. I don't think he's really cutting anything. I don't think he's really trying very hard or whatever. But he's just a natural 170 year. I wouldn't mind sure seeing he... the BMF title uh, rematch either, though. I'm pretty sure that um, Nate stays in shape pretty much all year long, though. I mean, not eating. Honestly, I don't know if that, that BMF title is ever going to be defended. Or you no, it's never supposed get... to be. The only so it's never way supposed to be. it happens is if either Connor fights Masvidal or we get a rematch with Nate Diaz and Masvidal. That's the only way I see that. The, the BMF title literally on it says one of one. It was never supposed to be defended, whatever. It was just a ridiculous thing where Dana White was just like, you know what? I'll buy into it. I'll make a belt for this. <laughs> like, that's all it was. But... It does open up to that rematch, especially the way that it ended with the doctor stoppage and Masvidal's fall from grace. I mean, his fall from grace wasn't really bad. He lost twice to the champ and then to his old roommate, Bestie. Yeah. But what messed him up was the whole doing it in the streets and and whatnot, but I mean, that only helps promote that fight. I, I don't 
promote violence on that level, but it is what it is. Can't say certain things without repercussions. They're both just, wrong. Two wrongs. Over I just think right. it made him. I, I think it just made him look bad. In all honesty, you had all the time in the world to do whatever you wanted to him and get paid for it, and you couldn't do shit. You know, so you see the picture of his tooth. Yeah, Kobe's tooth though. <laughs> I ain't saying shit. And I think it would have been something no different if it was like a barroom fight, like BJ Penn had. <laughs> oh, where they tossing th- chairs and shit and cups. Yeah, but in this situation, it was literally like you fucking put a mask and your hood up and tried to sneak up on a motherfucker. Like you look bad in that situation. You might as well have shanked him at that point. Oh no, it's not like he hasn't done it before. I mean, right. So to me, it's standard. It's normal. Jorge Masvidal, so I don't see anything. Um, I don't see it's like this is he snuck in. He ran up to him. I wonder what's going to be the consequence. It was like he snuck up, crept up behind him and quietly snuck there like a ninja and then punched him and then quietly crept away. If you just watch the video, he ran up to him. If you see somebody running towards you, I'm pretty sure he's not coming there to give you a Snickers bar. So you're a fighter. I don't know. I just don't. I don't see anything. I wonder what the no, no, no news. Is be, no news. Nothing. Well, for Masvidal, it's, it's going to hurt him for sure. He's probably going to face at least, at, at minimum, some fines. Probation, maybe. Yeah. Um, I thought that was already like resolved, and he just got out. Like he already set bail. He's already out. I thought the they already did like the hearing or whatever, and he just. It's like a restraining order and fines. I'm not yeah, sure. I, I don't. Yeah, I see, I'm just gonna get at minimum fined. That's the min- yeah. bare minimum. But but here's the thing: like Kobe press charges, so um, it could be some at least civil action. Well, that's what I mean. I think they already had the the hearing, and I think it was just fines and a restraining order. Interesting. Like he's he's not allowed to be around Kobe. Okay. Without legal repercussion. Mm. Interesting. Um. Yeah, I really. As far as since we mentioned Mods at all, um, I think a good fight. Since we we couldn't get, we're well, not that no, we couldn't get because not it hasn't been booked yet or has not been booked yet. We all wanted the the. Uh, Connor versus DS3, right? If that doesn't happen, here's another good one for Diaz. How about Diaz versus, I mean, I know you said this earlier, but I think this makes the most sense for both guys. And how about Diaz Ferguson? That You make that fight happen, put that 170, and then do Connor versus Masvidal on the rebound on Connor's coming, uh, next fight. I don't think Connor has interest in that one, though. You know, there's always got to be something for Connor in all his fights. I don't he, see he has any interest in that. I think it's the same as him fighting Cowboy. I got a question, though. Has either one of them really, like, shot at each other and, like, sent any, like, sneak disses or thrown some jabs at one another, like, internet, mm-hmm. you know, social uh, Mas- media? Mas- in the in the cage or anything, have they done anything like that? Osvaldo has been on record saying that uh, Connor, I will fuck that little dude up. Did Connor respond? No clue. No, probably not. It's probably nothing that, uh... too heavy with it. You get what I'm saying? But I f- I feel those two. That's a that's that's a crazy main event. I like it. Yeah. I don't see a matchup that Connor can come back to that makes sense. Besides that, I none of the matchups have to make sense for though. I can see him well, versus Diaz. They're both I mean, coming as far off as, a loss. Blah blah blah. Right. Finish their business. I mean, as far as like Connor coming back to a favorable matchup, the last time he came back was when he fought Cowboy, and that was a favorable matchup. I don't see any more favorable matchups that are of anybody of note. Like but, if you. If, unless he unless it's 
Um, the only other favorable matchup I can see him having, if you want to call it that, would be uh, Ferguson, Connor. Like, who else that could he come back against and then he'd be a favorite? Tony's right gonna now. love that fight too if he gets it. Yes, McNuggets. McNuggets. Oh my god! But I the think pump. I think he shot that one down too, though. Who's that? Who did? Because Connor started talking shit about uh, Ferguson after Ferguson got kicked in the face. Ferguson, Ferguson definitely wants it. He definitely want will take that fight. Um, and yeah, Ferguson will, yeah. And but the thing is, for Connor, there are no tune up fights at this level. There's that's the closest thing you can get to a tune up fight. Connor yeah. doesn't want a tune up fight. Connor wants Kamaru Usman or Charlie Olives. There's no look. <laughs> you can say what you he can say what he wants. There's no fucking way he's getting in the ring with Kamaru Usman. Dude, there's a, a murderer's row in front of him. To this, he said the exact same thing about. But Woodley. you gotta remember, it's Connor. He said the same thing about Woodley, and that fight never got sniffed. Woodley is nowhere near what Kamaru is. Kamaru will beat the living fuck out of Connor. They, but he, there's no way he signs the deal. There's no way Connor would ever sign that deal. In fact, I'll put you this way: if Connor were to ever sign that fight or retire from watching mixed martial arts, look at it this way. Right now, we don't have a lightweight champ. So, Connor fighting for a vacant title isn't out of the ordinary against Charlie happen. Olives. It could happen. It could you know happen. What? That could happen. Charlie Olives could happen. That it could, could happen, happen because Islam hasn't fought nobody in the top five. That's his only knock on him, really, in my opinion. Fair knock. Yeah, I, I really don't. I don't see um reason why that couldn't happen because it's not going to happen line. against RDA because uh, RDA and uh, Fazeev just got pushed back to June, I believe. June or mm-hmm. July. The Fizayevs. Yep. So Rafael's. Unless they're planning to just like throw Islam in there, I don't know what's going to happen. I unless think Islam, Islam is supposed Chandler. to fight. No, it's supposed to be Islam versus Darius again. Darius mm-hmm. is injured. And I, that injury is like, I guess, prolonging movement for that. So. Got it. It's it's, it's up to the UFC, really. I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing Connor versus Michael Chandler, honestly. I wouldn't hate that. I like it. Well, I like that. Because that boy's like going to go forward. He's going to go forward. Ooh, so I like, I like that a lot, actually. Now, now I think about it, matchup wise, or even yeah, just the Gaethje great. shit. I like, I like. I like he he that never guy. signs that fight. I, I don't think he ever signs that fight either. Who Gaethje? Oh, no, I don't think Connor ever signs that fight against Gaethje. Fight. Gaethje would sign that right off the bat. Oh. Gaethje will. Gaethje signs. Gaethje's like one and all. He got Connor would stamp fucking mm-hmm. signing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Connor has a better chance of signing a fight against fucking Usman. He don't want to fucking Gaethje. No, he ain't signing a fight with Gaethje. Never. If that ever happens, I'm, well, I'll be fucking amazed. I'll be impressed and interested, but I don't I doubt it. Cause I don't see him leapfrogging the whole thing because it wouldn't make no sense. But it is the UFC. We are in the entertainment era. But I don't see him leapfrogging Poirier because Poirier just beat him, even though it's a... Uh, TKO referee stoppage type of thing. So he's still got unfinished business with Poirier. Technically, it's one and one. Technically. Am I right? Well, you know what? Well, you know what? I mean... They could run it back. Exactly. They could. Poirier Poirier doesn't have a fight either. That hot sauce is better than that whiskey. (laughs) I'll actually agree with that because that whiskey ain't that good. Also, that was key. It's pretty solid. And they got the hot, hot one, too. I ain't tried that one yet, though. It's a push. But either way, I think Gaethje against Connor, if he really wants that title belt, title belt. If he really wants a shot at the title, fight Gaethje. Even Chandler. I think or, Chandler's a good one. Or Makachev against Chandler. I'd rather see the Connor Chandler. 
See if Connor can be the Bellator beater. I like Connor Chandler. I'm in, I'm in for that one. I, think and I like Chandler. Chandler's odds in that Chandler or in that fight too. Because I hate Mark. to put a I do too. You shout like on the the sidewalk or something, and not letting him get no nothing. But he should be back soon, right? Whatever the injury is, it must be serious. I don't think it's uh, they got inhibited. <clears throat> Um, I mean, it just happened, so it's not like he's had a year off. Yeah, but it, it just sucks for Dariush because every time he finds momentum, something happens to where he's like, he just gets kicked to the curb all the fucking time, and it kind of sucks for him. Yeah. And it, it would be the same in this situation. Like, I would love to see Conor McGregor versus Dariush also, but... I don't think Connor ever signs that fight, not because he doesn't think he can beat Darius, but because Darius just isn't a good enough name. Darius is solid, though. I agree. He's a very and I think that's a good one. matchup. To be honest, I think that would be a solid fight. Like the matchmakers was dead on when they chose that one. I I, I just wish it would have happened. Hmm. But in my opinion right now, lightweight division is, man, everybody's chasing Charles, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you can say what you want about Islam, blah, blah, blah. He hasn't got a shot yet. But bro, who does he beat? Who does he beat? Islam? Yeah, exactly. Who does he beat? He just, he just is beating everybody else. He hasn't beat no, nobody in the top five. You know what's crazy about that? Look at look at um, at Chandler's win list. He beat a winless Hooker and a winless Ferguson. Yeah, but at least those are like top flight. He put up good names. matchups against the people he lost to, though. Was he two and two yeah. right now? Right. Yeah, two he's two and two. two. Two and two. Coming from the B leagues. Wait, hold on. His only good performance was against Gagey. Not that was it. Yeah, Dan he didn't knock down. He, I mean, that was a great no, no, performance no. against Dan Hooker. He beat Hooker. I know. No, no, those are two losses. His losses. His, his, oh, his losses. Wins. Oh, he beat his the losses. breaks off Charles Oliveira in the first round. Knock yeah. What's he? Yeah. Doing? Breaks off. He didn't knock him down. Knock him down. He did. I like, give he knocked uh, him down. First he round was all out. Chandler. He got squeezed out. That was a 10-8 round, bro. That was a 10-8. That was 10-8. That was 10 eight. I mean, it was it was that was an, a very impressive two round fight. Obviously, so it was very good until he got caught slipping. Charlie said, "Hold up, player. Mm-mm. Not Squeeze today. Him out. Not today." He's his ass. He choked him out or he knocked him out. Choke. Nope. Knocked him down. He knocked him. He down. knocked him down to the choke. Yeah, squeezed him out. Yep, that's how he. That's how he does it. That's 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 all the hours special. I come down, squeeze him out. Ain't it crazy how like this dude went from being like, oh yeah, you're good, but you always lose here and there, but you're good, right? To being this champion. That's just. Yeah, you look at his record. You never think shit. that's gonna be champ. Like same shit. Like oh, you're good. You get knocked down, but you don't lose. You come back and choke everybody out. It's crazy. It's crazy how it is. Crazy sport, bro. I mean, it, he literally went from the guy that everyone was talking about quitting and can't make it over the hump to now people are arguing that his resume is better than Habib's. I think it is already. I don't disagree. You just agree then, right? You yeah. don't disagree. You disagree. I agree. That's what I'm saying. I don't disagree. That phrase just makes my brain melt. I, I, when I, hear I love it. That, <laughs> I don't disagree. I'm like, ah. Oh. I, re- I really I love would have loved to see a, a my brain fight code. like four more fights, honestly, before he so? retired. Habib, I wish he would have fought like Great. four more fights. Four more important fights just to prove he was the man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not saying nothing like, bro, his his skill set was amazing. He did what he had to do. Mm-hmm. He took people out of there really quickly. 
Not necessarily, not quickly. He most of his fights were decisions, but that's fine. I'm talking about once he got the title. Okay. No, he well, here's the thing about Habib. One of the most dominant champions ever. As far as um he didn't lose very many rounds. He didn't take a whole lot of damage. He dominated in that aspect. Obviously, one of the best examples of wrestling we've seen in the UFC. However, resume wise, bottom tier. Because right. he only got like what, three title three title defenses. He, he only Connor. got like three notable names, in my opinion. But as far as title, His title he, defenses. First of all, fuck it. Let's just be real. He won the title out at Quinta, cuz. So he won the, his method of getting the title was fighting a guy that's not in the top ten. And he got then he has He was uh, number a, eleven. Fair enough. Right. Out in the top ten still. Is, yeah, that's is what I'm saying. He was number eleven. You're right. <laughs> You're right. He was number eleven, disagree. I believe, at that that point. No, I'm right. just letting everybody know he was number eleven. <laughs> but he's number one realtor. Uh, of course, he'll get you. A house. And he's number one in the hearts of Long Islanders. All right, that's yes. still my boy. That's, that's still Chris my Wyman. boy. That's Chris I know, but still, okay. I'm still gonna go with it. Number eleven. <laughs> he was currently eleven at the time of the title bout. So his, uh, so Habib's defense. Oh, so he won that fight against Al, which that was probably his best stand up fight ever. Them jabs, um, them jabs, jabs, them jabs was real on that in that fight. Jabs, it was real. And then uh, he got the defense against. I mean, his first defense it was his first defense against. Sorry, I mean, it was call. the best matchup they could have put like for Habib with uh, Connor. Yeah, it was Connor. Was yeah, Connor, Connor was, was before him. First? Yeah, Connor was the first. Was the first. Was but that was drunk game. Connor though, and so it don't count. Then Poirier, then Poirier, it don't count, right? Though. It was drunk. Yeah, Connor. then Poirier, then Gaethje. Okay. It was drunk Connor, so oh, yeah. that don't count. So and Olives has squeezed out the same guys. He beat Ga- Gaethje, right? And then he beat Poirier, right? Mm-hmm. He beat Gaethje faster than uh, Habib did. Yep. And then, so but the only only win that he doesn't have is Connor, but Connor's not in the game right now or in. Realistically speaking, he's not in the title picture. Realistically speaking, um, hypothetically speaking, he's always in the fucking title picture because he's Connor. He also took Tony right. uh, Ferguson's home twice. That's right. That's facts. The only reason why I say he, twice is because there ain't no way Tony's arm was still there, and he was still getting put in that arm bar for that long. And he didn't. Tony said. Tony said he was gonna beat him with that arm. <laughs> Tony's a special character. Um, Oliveira does have an impressive resume, however. Here's where Habib shits on him. He got, eight, he got like, Oliveira has like eight losses. He got none. Habib has zero. Right. That's what the resume also... is. That's where the resumes kind of have a little bit of a, a, a discrepancy yes. as far as edge. Because yes. Habib barely lost a round. He was the most I mean, the dominant only, lightweight fighter that the UFC had. Only rounds I say he really lost was to um, the Brazilian Connor fight. The, the Connor, Connor fight. fight. Connor fight. He maybe lost maybe first round, maybe. Maybe he lost but, but, the first round of the Connor fight, and he lost one round to um, Ali Quinta. Okay, I don't think either one of those were legitimate round losses. But if you want to go by that, sure, I won't even argue. But I don't think he legitimately lost any one of those rounds to any one of those two guys. The only guy that gave him trouble was Glyson Tebow. No, I know. That was the only time. One. That was the only time I saw him like actually struggle and I know another could potentially lose a round. Was I know another Glyson Tebow. I know another fight. I definitely do. It's called uh, the weight scale. <laughs> He almost died against Ferguson. First one. Which one? Which one? No, when he got hit, I think he had like liver failure. Was, or was it on Tuesday? With Terry He got scheduled five times, and well, they both were hurt because Tony did the blind, mellow jelly, fucking wearing sunglasses indoors, got tripped on the wire. That was hurt himself. so dumb. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That was his fault. That's the one way it was finally going to happen. We was ready to go. Then Tony trips on wire. And blows out his fucking knee. Tweaking, cuz. Tweaking. That's when that fool dressed up in the suit and had the gloves on and shit at the fucking press conference. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Kind of fucking, baseball. The Tekken Fighter fucking intro. Oh my god. I was is there so a fighter? Mad. Bro, let me ask you a question. Is there, is there a fighter on a roster that you wanted the championship more for than Tony? A fight for the championship or actually be champion? I never be got the champion. title. Be the title. Be the champion. And then get it. Is there, is there a guy you you personally wanted to have it that didn't get it in him? There's one guy. There's only one guy for me. But I can't. Tony right now. I'm, I don't think, I can think of only one guy besides Tony, personally speaking, that I would like to have seen win the title. You think of anybody? Or is Tony that guy for you? I don't even know if like Tony was a guy that I wanted to have the title, whether it was just I thought he deserved the title shot over everyone else. Okay. So you have so, a like, like well, I'm trying to think of like I'm trying to think because I know there's other fighters that I thought should have been champion. No, no, that should have been champion, but you just want to see them win it. Mm. Like not that they didn't, they got hoes or anything. I, I got, I got like, was, I got like one and a half. Let me get one that. and a half. Let me get that one and a half, cuz. I got, I got the first one was definitely Tony. Okay. Like even though he won the interim title, it just wasn't, you know, the real title. Then my halfway point was Wonder Boy. I was wanting okay. to win it, but with Tyron, the first fight, that was a close fight. Second fight, nah, he lost that one. It was just, that was it for him. That's how I felt. I and wanted Henderson. to see him to win the belt. Henderson. I got a couple. And Henderson. Henderson. I wanted to see oh, him get a title because, let's be honest, he's had a title everywhere else. He was the man everywhere, and he just missed one. He lost both titles though when he showed up and then he never got that john jones fight because remember he was at 205 for a while yeah and he never got i that wanted him fight bro i got a bunch i can't believe you guys are skipping and he should have beat i just can't think Bisping. right now he should have beat Bisbing the second right round. Mm-hmm. i wanted him to win that one so badly even though he was way over the hill at that point in no order i'm gonna give you mine in no order but i got five in no order, um, all daily. I want to see him win so. I want to see him win a title so bad. I want him just like left, left. Yeah, that, that way. Look, Josh Koscheck got him kicked out of the UFC. I want to right. see him like left hook somebody into another dimension on his way to the championship. I don't care if he's ended it. I just want to see him get it. That was my boy for a long time. Rumble Johnson. I want Rumble to get a title so bad. I forgot. So about bad. Him. So bad. This is one that I'm surprised you didn't say was Gay Garden was saucy. Oh my god. Gayguard, yeah. I'll I'll agree love with to have seen Gay Guard get UFC gold. That's number three. Hey, time out, time out. At time that out. point in time when Gegar was smoking everybody, mm-hmm. who would have he fought for the title at that point? Was it Weidman? It wasn't Weidman because mm-hmm. he picked Whitaker. up Weidman Whit- off the ground yeah. and needed him in the head. Like he, he made sure your hands ain't touching and he need him in the head. It, it would have been, been Whitaker or right? Bisbing. Or Yoel? Whitaker or Bisbing. Whitaker. Whitaker. Whitaker, Bisbing. You all never had the title. So it would have been no, Whitaker. No, for like an uh, interim or whatever. It would have been, been floating around there at that time frame where Rockhold well, fought. Uh, it would have been Whitaker or, oh, or, 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 actually, you know what? It, it would have been Whitaker or Adesanya because it could have been, he could have been Calvin. Oh. Could have been in the same spot as Calvin was in. Well, his, his title spot was. The reason why they had the whole throwout was because, and he got pushed back, was because of um, Bisbing GSP and that whole time frame. Whitaker, Bisbing, and GSP, that whole holdup. That's that's where he got like thrown out of the equation. So it would have been either Bisbing or Whitaker that he would have fought. Damn. Damn. That would have been a good fight. He yeah. should have. It should have been Gay Guard. Fighting Bisbing instead of Dan Henderson, because Dan Henderson wasn't even in the title picture. Wait, no, no, no. They pulled some the, strings for that one. Hold on, wait. That was a request Gagar, from the champion Gagar, at that point. When Gagar, when Gagar and Musasi fought Chris Weidman, who was the middleweight champion? Either Rockhold or Bisbing. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think it was either one of those guys. I thought I, I think it was Marvin Whitaker. Look it up real quick. 
I think Robert Whitaker was the interim champion at that time, waiting on Bisbing. Mm. Because oh, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be Rockhold versus uh Weidman two. And then Bisbing won the title. And then Bisbing got injured. And um <clears throat> Bisbing got injured. That's why they created the whole Whitaker versus Yoel. And then even though Whitaker won the interim title, they did the GSP fight. So yeah, Gegard should have been fighting when Dan Henderson fought for the title. That's when he should have done it. So it should have been against uh, Bisping. Who was the champion in August of 2021 in the middleweight division? Probably Izzy. It would have been Israel Adesanya. Because the Chris, the, the Chris Wyman Gegard Musasi fight was on August 13th, 2021. No, was that in twenty one? No, he was already bro, in Bellator by then. Bro, that's last year. That's last year. Yeah. Wait, no. One. Is on this article. Sorry, I, my fault. My fault. This that's article year, is bro. from there. That's no, that's fair. That's fair. That, this article is from twenty twenty one. My bad. Actual fight itself. Was, um, twenty is uh, April twenty seventeen. Right. My bad. Yeah, because I was like, man, gegard has been in Bellator forever. So who was but, the champion in twenty seventeen? That's the question. I'm gonna go Who's the with middleweight, uh, middleweight title holder in 2017. I'm gonna go with uh, Izzy or Robert Whitaker. It has to be Izzy. I don't think Robert. it was Izzy yet. It has to be. That's why I said Robert Whitaker because he was the only champion before. He was a champion before Izzy, and I don't think Izzy was the title holder at this point. I think it was Rob. I think Rob was at that point doing the wars with um, Yoel at that time. Right. And those wars with Yoel were while Bisping was champ, but injured. Oh. Yeah, because those were interim fights. Oh, Bisping got squeezed out by fucking, um, by GSP. What, what time That's frame? what I'm saying. 2017. 2017. 2017. What, what month? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, the fight itself was in April. April 8th. April 8th was Musasi against Biz, or? Biden. Wyman. The following week was uh, Jacare versus Whitaker. He knocked him out. That was before he got his title. And then mm. three months later, he fought Yoel Romero to a decision and won that title, I believe. The vacant title? Won the, or the interim? No, he won the interim because Bisping was injured and they were trying to set up the uh, GSP fight. And then, oh, Bisping! I thought I thought I thought BS, GSP had taken it from um, he beat Bisping, Bisping and the, correct, and then it was like he retired. So the, that's why it was an interim fight, not because Bisping was injured. I it was no, like, it was an interim fight, fight because they were setting up the. It, it was they had the inter or interim fight, and then Robert Whitaker held out for a while because they were doing Bisping versus uh, GSP, and then GSP. Retired. That's why they promoted Whitaker to champ. And that's why he defended it against Romero a year later. GSP versus Bisbing was in November of 2017. And Robert Whitaker didn't fight again until June of 2018 against Romero. So then, yeah, you're right. It would have been either... Um, he was fighting for a championship, assuming that he was in in line for it. It would have been against, it would have been Robert Whitaker then, because we already know that GSP beat his being that same year. That was the same year. He beat him at the end of the year, so there's no way he's getting a turnaround fight there. GSP, GSP beats Bisbing, vacates. It would have been against Whitaker. It really been, should have been Whitaker versus Musasi for the interim. Right, that's what I'm saying. It would have been Whitaker. It would have been the matchup. Yeah. That's a good matchup. That's a great matchup. like it. We might have never seen Whitaker as champ. Exactly. I don't know. Probably not, no. I'd, I'd give an edge to Musasi. If, if I'm picking an edge, if I'm giving um, any one of them an edge, I give Musasi an edge to used to fight at 205. The bad motherfucker, bro. You know what I'm saying? Gagar, I, I even think Gagar would, um, would be a great fight against Izzy. Just personally speaking, I think that would be a fucking great matchup. I agree. Oh, um... I'm on board 
for that one. With that being said, though, other two fight, other two fighters out of the five that, that never won a title, I was personally hoping did. Carlos Condit. I was really hoping he won a title. I really hope that Gustafsson would have won a title. I agree okay. with Gustafsson. Those, those, were, those, mm-hmm. those were the five guys out of um, history of the game that I've been in. I'm like, man, I really wish they could have got an opportunity to win. Because I would love to see Paul Daly just fucking left hook somebody into another dimension for that title. And then, obviously, Rumble. Rumble was knocking out everybody, but could never get past the, the wrestlers that could choke him out. And uh, Gustafson couldn't beat the big black dudes. Uh, let's see, Condit had a bad mix of injuries and like GSP being the guy. Um, who's the other, the last person? Musasi. Musasi just ran into a shit deal with the UFC because he should have, he's the only legitimate guy that probably could have had it. I mean, if he was in the UFC for two more fights, he's probably champion. Didn't he want the uh pay? That's why he went yeah. over to Bellator. Wait, well, well, he wanted to be treated better too. He he likes the way that Scott Croker treated him versus because they had they were in strike force together. Yeah, and he liked that business more. So he wanted a little bit more pay. He wanted sponsorships back. He he hated the whole log jam at the top of the division because of the whole GSP and everything going on. When everyone knew that whole the whole Bisbing era. As middleweight champ was all bullshit. Oh, it definitely like, was. I but mean, he, he legit won the title. He legit won the title, he but did. his title defense against Dan Henderson was bullshit. Was and bullshit. the the fight against GSP was just a cash grab, and then he lost. So that, that, smoke that should never happen. That should never have happened. And then GSP good for said, GSP. Fuck right now, <laughs> fighting anyone else in this division. I'm actually happy that happened for GSP. I am too. I'm not going to lie. I love that that's part of GSP's uh, legacy. But I also know, and I said it at the time when all this was getting set up, there is no way GSP ever defends that because the second they put him against Yoel, he's fucking going to die. You know what? I don't think I ever truly forgave Bisbee for ducking Yoel or for... Ro- it's not his fault, but for him robbing... Uh, Hamill when they in in England. It wasn't his fault the judges gave him the fight, but he did not beat Matt Hamill in England. And won that fight. And um He's undefeated he in England. No, it's, it's insane to me how he won, that he won that fight. But I also think that uh he ducked the OL pretty heavy. He, yeah, he, he, won, did. he won no part of the OL. He didn't want no part of any of the actual contenders in the thing. He literally he fought. Rockhold. He didn't want Rockhold. He did want Rockhold. Well, he I did. mean, when he that was when he actually got the title, that, that was personal. personal. Was personal. And Rockhold. short notice as hell, so yeah. you're going to do and that. But when Rockhold it came to actual legit, contenders. He's contender. Well, he's a champion. Better than a contender. He beat the fuck out of Wyman. Earned that title. No, no. I'm saying after that, when he was defending his title, his title defenses were bullshit because he didn't want... Any of the actual 185 contenders. He fought a guy that was unranked and like over the hill and still almost lost. He wanted that get back. And I wanted Dan Henderson to win that. I mean, I'm just saying. But I knew it wasn't supposed to be. That was for America and just just because. I mean, run it back from the ultimate fighter. I saw a video, a clip one time. It was Yoel calling out uh, Bisming. Back when Bisbee was the uh, top of the middleweight division, he was like, "I'm everywhere you are. I'm in Manchester. You know here. You know here." Bro, imagine this dude like following you around everywhere you go. You talk right. about me. You talk about Mosblaw. But man, whatever. If if you well, <laughs> if you well sneaks you or just comes to you while you're whatever, and then you'll be missing more than two. That's for damn sure. I don't want no problems. No. You well? Yeah, no problems. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey. I mean. We're going over uh, two hours now, guys. You guys ready to call it?
I know we've and been then, we've been away for a little while, so it was good to get it going. But you guys ready to call it? Yeah, man. Yes, it's a we reunion. That note, though, I'm gonna give a shout out to all our all our peoples. Appreciate the support. Appreciate the likes. Appreciate you guys viewing our content. Uh, if you are first timer, hit the subscribe button, the like, hit us up in the chat. With me and Mark are both on Twitter at Ashy Knuckles MMA. Um, but on that note, we can zip that shit up. Zip it up. Zip it out. Peace.